In this video, we're going to take a look at detail callouts and the different ways we might be able to control the visibility range within a detail callout. I've got a basic building here, nothing really dramatic going on, a, a rectangular room, and in that rectangular room I do have a couple of upper cabinets just so we can get an idea of some visibility issues, and a, a wood floor so we can understand when we're seeing that particular floor. If I go to create a callout inside here, we have a couple different callouts. A floor plan callout, if I drop in one of these, will display itself very much according to any other floor plan. If we look at it down here in the list of properties, we've got a typical view range, everything set up here just like any other floor plan view. Now that's all well and good, but what about a detail callout? If I do another callout, and I'll just do the same area, instead of a floor plan I'll choose a detail view, call out the same basic region, go into this one, and first off we'll notice that we lost sight of the upper cabinets. Well, a detail callout is fundamentally different from a floor plan callout, and there's maybe some different ways that we need to take advantage of those differences to our best benefit, but other than that, if we look at what we've got inside properties of this view, there's nothing in here for a visibility range. We have a, a far clip offset, and right now that's set to be the same as the parent view, which is, in my case, level one. If we set this to be independent, well, we've got no clip, and I can say, well, clip without a line or clip with a line. If I say clip with a line, I can start adjusting this offset. If I go to five feet, then we start to see the floor again because I'm now going down far enough. But where, where is it clipping from? How is it controlling different types of things? Where is it coming to? All this comes around. Well, if I, again, take a look at the properties of this view, there's a setting up towards the top where we have show in, parent view only. Well, rather than just the parent view, which means show this call out only in level one, we can show it in parent view and in intersecting views. The difference will be, if I leave this as parent only and go to my east elevation, we've got nothing going on here. If I go back to that detail call out, and I'll take the properties of this and change it to also be intersecting views, all of a sudden I see this popping up as a, a section mark in this elevation view because the elevation intersects this detail. And inside here, because it's a section and acts like a section, we've got the same sort of graphic controls that we might have for a section. Uh, controlling the view depth, the view range left and right. Um, if I was going looking at it the other direction, I'd get the other dimensions from here. And we can also see where that cut elevation is coming from. But right now, I cannot move this cut up or down. You'll notice as I try to move it up or down, it's just controlling the view range. If I want to move it up or down, what I need to do is select that detail mark, that's kind of detail section if you want to call it that, and down below in its properties, the parent view. I want to disassociate it from its parent view. Even though the far clip has got its own independent settings, the parent view is controlling the cut area. If I set that parent view to none, now I can grab that imaginary section and move it wherever I want. If I move it up high enough, when I go back to this section view, all of a sudden I'll start seeing some of these additional lines for my casework. And since I have it completely separate, we can control the cut by going to one of those perpendicular views, those intersecting views. We can control the far clip offset with a real number or by grab grip editing it. And then the rest of this is just acting as, again, any other sort of section or view would.